Today we're going to talk about two-wheel drive conversions on the Lamborghini Murcielago and the vibrations that come if it's not done correctly. Converting a Lamborghini Murcielago to two-wheel drive is one of the best upgrades you can do. It's easy, doesn't take very long, and is totally reversible. Let's start off by looking at the pieces that make up the original four-wheel drive system. Here are the pieces on a table that make up the four-wheel drive system of the Lamborghini Murcielago. So, if we have a look here. I'm going to use this little stick here just to point stuff out. But you have a torque tube. And there's a drive shaft that runs inside of that torque tube. And if you can imagine the gearbox is over here, we'll have a look underneath the car in a little bit, just where that is. And then over here is the front differential. And there's a drive shaft that comes off of each side that goes out to the front wheels. And the front differential is supported to the chassis via these rubber mounts. Now these don't have to come off the car when you're doing two wheel drive installation, but I took them off just as a point of reference. And uh, the combination of all of these parts is 106 pounds. So that's the amount of weight for all of these parts. And if you actually just want to break it down a little bit, the torque tube is just over 10 pounds. This shaft over here is just under six pounds. The differential, obviously the biggest one with fluid is 57.2 pounds. And the drive shafts are 15 pounds a piece. So let's go look underneath the car now, just to see where these parts came from. Here we are under the car, and there's the gearbox. And we're gonna have a look at where the four wheel drive assembly goes. So if we look underneath here, the front side of the gearbox, the shaft spins and takes power to the front of the car via that shaft that goes inside the torque tube. The torque tube connects to this face of the gearbox and travels along the underside of the car forward 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 until it gets to right around where the steering rack is and there's a big opening over here that's where the differential goes and here you can see where the two mounts go if you can imagine there's a drive shaft that goes to either side takes power to the wheels and there's your four-wheel drive system Having looked at the components that make up the four-wheel drive from the factory, and having looked at where they go installed on the car, let's now look at a problem that exists when you remove these parts from the car. So if we look underneath the car, you're going to see that there's a very, very large drivetrain here. The engine, the gearbox together is over seven feet long and over 950 pounds. So with all that weight, and it rocks around a lot with the torque of the engine, it needs to be well supported. Now, if we take a look over here, there are two motor mounts, very, very large motor mounts, biased about two thirds of the way back on the drivetrain. Keep going towards the back a little bit here. On the rear differential and the back side of the differential is an additional mount that supports everything. But as we work forwards, you're gonna see that it's a long, long way before there's any more support. Support goes all the way here. And just up top there, is a mount and we're going to talk about that mount in a bit because it's very very important and just for a point of reference the shifter is right here so you can get a feel for where we are under the car and then moving all the way forwards here the torque tube would be here and we'd be supporting the drive line again from these two mounting points via the differential if you remove all of these components and you don't support the gearbox, what happens is that the gearbox, if we go over here, there's a steel cross member over here. There's a gap between the gearbox and the steel cross member. And if you don't support it correctly, every time you change gears or accelerate hard, this engine assembly will rock and slam into the steel mount, which is something you definitely don't want to do. So when you remove the four wheel drive components, it is necessary to support the front of the gearbox.
Having looked at how the drivetrain is supported, let's turn our attention back to that mount on the front side of the gearbox. Looking at this image, you can see the front gearbox mount on the right side. It's the silver cast aluminum piece, and it's bolted to a black steel structure, which bolts to the chassis. And on the left side, you can see that square opening where the gear stick would go. That gives you a bit of a feel for where everything is. Now I ran into an interesting problem. I did a full service on my car, and when the engine and gearbox went back in, and I drove the car, developed this really odd vibration. It was really unpleasant, and mainly under acceleration, the whole car would just kind of shake and vibrate. Now, I did a ton of research, and I couldn't find an answer until I came across a very experienced Lamborghini tech, which told me about an upgrade that Lamborghini did between the 2002 and 2003 model years. When doing my engine out service, I decided to change the forward transmission mount because it's buried pretty deep in the car and it's super easy to change when the engine is out. I ordered the parts from Lamborghini and I ended up receiving the mount that you see on the right to replace the mount that came off on the left. While the mounts looked visually different, I didn't think anything of it and thinking the parts came from Lamborghini, I'll just install them and we won't have any problems. As it turns out, this difference in mount created an enormous difference as to how smooth the car ran. I chased down a vibration for many, many months, thinking that it was in either in the fueling system or in the ignition system, the other motor mounts, the engine actually came out a second time chasing it. And in the end, as I mentioned earlier, a very, very experienced tech told me about this change that Lamborghini did between 2002 and 2003. The mount on the left is the mount that was used from 2003 forwards, and it was reverse installed on some 2002 and earlier cars if people brought them to the dealership in period to complain about vibrations. I can tell you that the difference between the two mounts is absolutely massive. And the mount on the right is wholly and entirely unpleasant to be in. Looking at this other photograph, you can see how the new mount or the newer style mount goes installed. You can see that there's a bit of an air gap between the round opening. And this mount allows for a lot more compliance in the drivetrain and absorbs a lot of the vibrations that come from the forward part of the transmission. Now, naturally, with this, if you want to call it weaker mount, it's necessary to still support the transmission well, which is why the torque tube and forward mount exists. But again, I cannot stress enough how unpleasant it was to drive the car with the older style mount. Having established the problem with using the front transmission mount to support the gearbox, we can now look at the fundamental problem associated with the commercially available two-wheel drive conversion kits on the market. If you take a look underneath the car again, you will see the front of the gearbox and the commercially available kits will grab onto the front of the gearbox here and they will create a little cantilever support here and this factory piece is replaced for another piece in which there's a rubber isolator between this mount and the one that goes between the chassis. The problem with doing that is that you're now introducing another, if you want to call it, even though it's rubberized, a hard point here, a hard point of connection, which brings you closer to having the solid rubber mount up here. It's not as bad, but it does transmit additional vibrations through the chassis. The proper way to do it is if you can maintain the torque tube and make the connection at the front the way the factory did, because the distance from the front to the back here is over 1.2 meters, almost four feet. So by being able to move your connection point forwards by four feet, you can maintain the factory amount of rubber here, the factory amount of rubber at the front, 
and you can eliminate any additional vibrations that would be brought through the car by connecting to this point right here. Here's the solution to vibrations on a two-wheel drive conversion. The Carbonio TT two-wheel drive conversion kit uses the factory torque tube together with a specially designed reinforced diff delete bracket. And this bracket takes the place of the differential and uses the factory mounting locations to have the engine and gearbox supported exactly as it would have been when the four wheel drive system was installed. And here we are with the final installation on the car. As you will see, we have a nice gap right here to the chassis. And then we just work our way along. Cross brace, factory cross brace is in place. Torque tube is in place. We work our way over to the front. And here is the diff substitution bracket in place. Nicely supporting everything. All ready to go for a drive. The parts shown in this video are designed and manufactured by Carbonio Design and Engineering. They're also available for sale on their website at carbonio.com. The kit is available in two forms, a full kit with stub axle deletes to replace the front drive shafts that are removed during the two-wheel drive conversion, or without the axle deletes for Murcielago owners that already have a two-wheel drive conversion but want to do away with the vibration creating forward transmission mount that comes with the other kit.